I don't know what dial-up internet is. I have no memory of that painful dial-up tone that everybody seems to talk about. Well, everybody older than me. The internet has just sort of always been there for me. It's always been there to help me and stop me from doing my homework. I've always had the whole world at my fingertips. Anything I wanted practically handed to me on a silver platter called the World Wide Web. I didn't have to go to encyclopedias or to the library when I wanted to know why the sky is blue or how human beings walked on the moon. Now, you might say that I'm spoiled. Spoiled for choice with the internet and all the technology young people have nowadays. And maybe you're right. I'm 21 years old, which makes me about the oldest of this current generation, otherwise known as Generation Z. You might have heard of us. It's likely that we'll have spent less time outside during our childhoods than most of you sitting here. Now, this might not fill you with vast amounts of confidence in my generation, but we are going to save the world, so bear with me. <laughs> Most of us knew how to use phones before we could read. Instead of learning to type, kids are learning to code and build their own computers. More than half of all children grow up speaking more than one language in their home every single day. IQs are rising and rising and rising. Now, I hate to break it to you, but we're smarter than you. <laughs> this is good, though, because it's going to take a lot to clean up your mess. It's a good thing that IQs are rising, because so are sea levels, so is the Earth's average temperature, and so are the number of animals going extinct every year due to human activity. But don't worry, I do have a solution. And it's quite simple, and it's something you've all been doing already. I hope. Listen. Just listen to us. We're asking you to be shocked that children have to literally get up and strike from school for the world to notice global warming. We're asking you to be outraged that a lot of politicians are telling them to turn around, go back to school. The best way to save the world is to study hard and become environmental scientists. We are begging you to listen, because there just is not enough time for that. Mother Nature has been telling us for the last few years that she is just about ready to throw in the towel. Here in Ireland, we had the warmest February for a good long time. When this time last year, we were getting absolutely battered by the beast from the east. The worst snowstorm that I have ever experienced in my life. And what happened? The whole country shut down. We just weren't prepared for it. So there is only one way to save the world. We just want you to listen to us. If you don't listen to us, well. I was eight years old when I got my first mobile phone. It was around that age that I first learned what global warming was. Only recently, I discovered that the term hang up the phone referred to literally hanging a phone onto the wall that had a cord hanging out of it. Now, older generations tend to complain about young people, how we're glued to our phones, we can't function without them. But who invented phones? Who advertises to young people? Who convinces us that we need more stuff? We can't help that our phones just seem to stop working after a year or two. We can't help that everything we buy is absolutely covered in plastic and cardboard and polystyrene. We can't help that it's killing our oceans and destroying wildlife. So 
it's a lot easier to roll over and say, well, nothing I do makes a difference. These big corporations like to call us consumers. They make things we want and need and we consume them. It makes sense. But as consumers, we can't help who they employ. We can't help who, how much their employees earn. We can't help if their products are ethical or sustainable. So that's why it's a lot easier just to think, well, I'm only one person. Nothing I do can ever make a difference. Well, tell that to Greta Thunberg. A 15-year-old girl who decided to say, enough. All by herself, she went and sat outside the Swedish parliament instead of going to school. She is now in her 30th week of her strike for climate. She gave a TED talk, she spoke to the uh, United Nations, and she's been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Today, the 15th of March 2019, marks the largest strike for climate we've ever seen, with tens of thousands of young people taking part across the world. Greta's one person, and she's making a difference. The Parkland students in the US suffered horrendous tragedy when a shooter walked into their school and killed their friends and classmates. They said enough. They organized rallies and protests to protest gun violence across America. Malala Yousafzai was 15 years old when she was shot in the head for advocating for a girl's right to go to school. At 17, she became the youngest person to receive a Nobel Peace Prize ever. Mary Copney, otherwise known as Little Miss Flint, is 11 years old. Flint, Michigan, in the US, is experiencing one of the worst water crises the world has seen. In one of the richest, most developed countries in the world, children are still drinking contaminated water. So she decided to say enough. Now, I want each and every person in this room to think about what they're saying enough to. Are you saying enough to buying clothes made by children working 16-hour days? Are you saying enough to driving when you know you could walk? Maybe you're saying enough to politicians who don't support and promote climate policy. If every single one of us in this room decided to say enough to one thing that damages the environment, what sort of change might we see? Yes, we're all only one person, but all of us added together, we could make waves. So you might laugh when I say that I don't know what dial-up internet is. I wouldn't know how to work a fax machine, and I've never hung up a phone on the wall. But this is all obsolete technology, and it's gathering dust or piling up on the landfill, because we've created this disposable society. But Generation Z, we're saying that we do not live in a disposable world, and we're going to keep on doing what we can to save it. We realize that you're never too young or too old to start making a difference. And we would love for all of you to join us. Thank you very much.